Where has the time gone, everybody? It has been almost five months since I've covered what's new with Dungeon Draft, which is far too long. Uh, I mean, when I made the last one, my webcam still made me look blue for some reason. In the five months since then, the developer Megasplute has been hard at work fixing bugs, creating new assets, adding support for custom assets, which I do have a video on creating, by the way, uh, and a whole host of other features, including Mac support. In total, there's been nine releases since my last What's New video, which means we've got a lot to cover, and here's how it's going to work. First, I'm going to go through the major new features and then quickly summarize several more worth noting, along with some improvements that people will really appreciate. And then we'll take a look at the new assets that are available so new users can get a look at all of the new goodies. Be sure to use the Seek Bar, which is split into chapters, uh, to make it easier to find what you're interested in. Let's get started. First off, as I mentioned, Dungeon Draft is available on Windows and Mac now, so all of you Apple fans can come and join us in the pool. The water is lightly animated. I've got a 16-inch MacBook Pro that I've installed Dungeon Draft on, and everything seems to be working as expected for me. Since Dungeon Draft is still in beta, of course, there are bugs and crashes, but I've had pretty good luck myself so far. Give it a try, and be sure to check out Megasploot's Discord, which is linked in the description if you run into any issues. Another huge feature is that custom asset support is here in Dungeon Draft, and it's awesome. I made a video on how you can create your own custom asset packs a while ago, but if you're a fan of Forgotten Adventures, Two Minute Tabletop, or a whole number of other popular map and asset makers, many of them have converted their work and made it available in Dungeon Draft asset packs that you can easily import. All you have to do is place all of your asset packs in a folder, tell Dungeon Draft about that folder by clicking on the Assets menu option, and then checking the assets that you want included. It may take a moment on first load, but after that I found it loaded quite quickly, even when I'm using every asset pack that Forgotten Adventures has made, which adds over 3,500 objects, terrains, paths, walls, and floors into Dungeon Draft. You can also check out cartographyassets.com for more free packs uh, from other creators. Next up, we have the ability to change the size of our maps. Now you can easily expand or shrink the size of your map in any and all directions by entering a positive number to expand or a negative number to shrink it. There's also these handy little arrows that you can use if you prefer clicking to typing. Another long-awaited feature is image tracing. If you've got a map you want to recreate, you can now bring it into Dungeon Draft, resize it, change the opacity, and use it as a base so you can remake it accurately. This is great for a lot of old maps that you may want to modernize, or if you want to fix the grids on maps with inconsistent square sizes, or you just want to make a Dungeon Draft version of Dust 2, though I'll recommend against it. I tried to make one as a joke for this comment, but it went terribly. Instant delete. Once you've made a copy of whatever map you want, though, you may want to check out the new Pattern Tool, which is basically like a movable version of the Floor Tool. You can use any of the default floor assets or a custom asset, draw it onto the map, and place it on any layer just like a normal object, and you can select and move them around the map for better positioning. If you make a lot of cave maps, you might have noticed that for a long time it was impossible to make an entrance or an exit to the cave without a hacky solution that didn't look very good. You'll be happy to know now that you can make uh, that you can blast open caves to make entrances and exits so your maps can now lead seamlessly from a field into a cavern without having to change maps or carefully place a bunch of objects over the walls to make it look like an entrance. Another nice new feature is the ability to increase and decrease path size so when you're making a path through the field towards your cave, you can make it match the width of the entrance or to make a teeny tiny blood trail to a wounded quickling off of the beaten path. Once you've made your cave, given it a nice entryway and path, you'll probably want to decorate it, which is a lot easier now that we've got an object search engine. In the object sidebar, you can now enter search terms and set it to fuzzy or exact, which will give you objects that are somewhat close to what you typed or only exactly what you typed respectively. A new feature has been added to the water system as well. You can now have multiple bodies of water that have different colors for the deep and shallow end. You can have as many as you want, but if the bodies of water end up touching, they both will take on the current color choice as they merge. If you've got a couple of assets that would make your map perfect, but they're not in a dungeon draft asset pack, then you're in luck. You can now drag and drop PNG and WebP files uh, directly into Dungeon Draft without making an asset pack. It will embed the image into the map, which will make the map file a little bit bigger depending on how big your image is, but you won't have to go through the process of making an asset pack or loading an entire asset pack when you only need one object from it. 
Now that you've got your whole map figured out, it's time to take a look at exporting. The biggest new feature for exporting is the Universal VTT format. This is a new file format that contains an embedded image of your map and a whole bunch of details about where walls, windows, lights, and doors are placed in that map so that your VTT can automatically add them to enable dynamic line of sight and fog of war. Currently, Foundry VTT supports the format through the Dungeon Draft import module made by Mooman, which I just made a video on by the way, as well as the Encounter Plus app on iOS. If you want your VTT to support the format as well, be sure to reach out to them and make your voice heard. That covers all the new major features in Dungeon Draft, but there's also been a whole bunch of awesome improvements to existing features. Let's go through a super quick summary of those, starting with objects. Objects can now be copy and pasted. The sidebar will remember uh, what object you last had selected after you've changed tools. And when you set a custom color for objects, you'll see all the color ob colorable objects in the sidebar in the color that you set. In the scatter tool, you can also turn off object shadows, so all of your randomly selected and placed objects won't have their shadow active. And you can also toggle shadows for walls as well, so when you place them, they'll be shadowless. There's also a bunch of new menu-based changes, like in the preferences, we can now set Dungeon Draft to snap to half grid points, and the new map menu will also remember your most recent selections and start with that. In the bottom of the window, uh, shortcut keys are visible for whatever tool you currently have selected, along with what they do. In the export menu, we now have the option to toggle lights and the grid on or off, export to JPEG, change the brightness and focus of the map, and the export menu will maintain the settings from however we last exported a map. Last but not least, there was a mountain of bug fixes, speed improvements, memory management improvements, and some more small quality of life improvements that you can check out in Megasploot's change logs, which will be linked down below. If you're a fan of Dungeon Draft's art style, then you're going to be pleased to hear that if my math is right, almost 250 new objects, materials, light styles, and paths have been added in since launch. I've set up a map that shows them off. Uh, for materials, we have a new ice asset. For paths, we have bridges, stairs, cliffs, chain, rope, shadows, and blood. Uh, there's also more light styles and a whole bunch of new objects from trees to cows to pipes to flotsam to coffins to tents to chandeliers to dragon skulls to autumn and cherry trees and a whole bunch more. I hope this has been an informative look uh, to any of you looking to pick up Dungeon Draft and to those of you who already use it but don't keep super up to date on the new features. I'm going to try and be a little bit more on the ball with these update videos but wow time has really flown since the last one. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you all in the next one.